Hey, YouTube pedal people. Um, we got a very, 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 very special kind of a pitch for you from the pedal pod people. Are you pod people? Hey, thank you. Thank you for the time, by the way, and stopping by. I appreciate it. Um, Hi, ha everyone. Harry Holden's behind the camera. Um, we looked at this yesterday. Uh, yesterday. Oh, my God, my brain. Not yesterday. Last year. Last year. Last year. And I had a couple of comments, and they went back and, you know, implemented them, which is like, what do I know? Uh, but they, apparently they thought I do know things. So we're looking at it again, and I want your opinion on what we're looking at. I want your input, what you think. We're going to talk about price point. We're going to talk about functionality. Exactly. And you put a lot of money and a lot of time into this, right? Yes, we have. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, Jerry needs your help. <laughs> we would love and value your feedback, please. Yeah. Because they want to make an insane product, and it's only possible if you're insane and you comment. Don't troll. Don't say it's shit. If you say it's shit, please give a detailed, you know, shitography <laughs> what you don't like. He can't make it better from it's shit. Yeah. Or I would never buy this. That doesn't help it you. It does not help. So if you comment, don't be an ass. Okay? So what we have, let's look at the finished thing here. We have a part board, which is, I love the idea of expandable pedal boards because once you put together a board and then you want to add a couple of pedals, all of a sudden, you don't have enough space anymore. So you buy a new board, a new power supply. Rewire. Yeah. Reterminate cables. You do all that other fun stuff. Exactly. So with this concept, you can actually add a part anywhere you want. A single one if you wanted to. A single one here. Um, you can make them higher and lower. So the concept of the part board is great. It does look a little bit bulkier and a little bit bigger. And you are not getting the pedals very close together. It is definitely a bigger board. It is a bigger board, but when you look at the overall size of the board, you take the most popular boards out there, Pedal Train, Temple, we're literally within a quarter of an inch of height of those boards. The reason why they look as large as they do is because the bottoms, you can't see through it. All your wire management, everything is taken care of. And so, yes, the it is higher, but is a quarter inch gonna kill you with wire maintenance and everything else and some of the other features that we'll talk about. Well, it's not the size of the board that is the issue here. It's how many pedals you get on it. So we have examples of boards. As you see, there is spaces. And this is the, the most elegant way to set the board up. We have individuals that'll do too many pedals. We have examples behind us where there's larger pedals spanning two boards. And we also have examples on our website where individuals have put pedals in between the pots. You can do that. When we get into the guts of this thing, you'll see that there's power and the ability to patch cable and put more than what you see here. Could I slide these pedals and put a third pedal here? Absolutely. And we have everything built in to do that. It's just aesthetically, I love wire management. I love things to look pretty. Because you're a nerd. Huh? I am a nerd. And I grew up in, in, the, uh, in the consumer electronics industry and I'm an audiophile, so I love neat and orderly things. Harry looks very uncomfortable right there. He was like standing like this. And I'm like, Harry, you know you're not getting paid for this. So, you know, you go. don't, don't go out of your way to break your arm, dude. You know, make the video shitty, but please be comfortable. Yep. So, um, you need this brain. Okay, so let's, let's start with what happens with the system. You can buy this two different ways. You can buy it with the electronics, or you can buy it as just empty pots and wire it like a traditional board. The wire management side of it, as you click these together, gives you the ability to pass the cables through. So if you want to use traditional Mogambi patch cables and a one-spot power as an example, you can do that, and we have an example of this behind you. If you want to do it with the electronics, you simply buy the version with the electronics. What is the same between all of them is these are built out of a high-impact ABS pre-primered plastic. If you wanted to paint them, this is just a Krylon or a plastic uh, paint. You wipe them down with rubbing alcohol and you're able to shoot them. If you want to do a translucent plate, you can do that as well. All of these are designed to be painted. There's drain holes all throughout. I hear that guitarists on occasion spill their beverage. It passes through, you can see all the holes in it. It passes through, drains out the bottom. There's also non-slip silicone pads, so if you're on a slippery stage or on a concrete surface, it prevents the board from sliding around. All that is the same. What makes the system unique with our wiring topography is, 
You're right, you can call it the brains. We call this the gas pedal. The upper half of this gas pedal is a voltage regulator and monitoring system that takes your power coming in, looks at it, and actively dumps everything it can, dumps the noise that's coming in on the AC line. You have an isolated five volt charger for your handheld devices, or if you want to do a downlight, you have the ability to do that. The lower half of this provides two loops of audio. There's two audio file buffers that are located in this that you can physically switch in or out of the circuit. So if you want to use a buffer, you select it in and it physically adds it into the chain or truly takes it out of the chain. From here, you wire the pods with a simple CAT5 cable or category cable. We've had people say, oh, it's digital. It's not digital. It's 100% analog. This cable was patented back in the 1800s and is designed to transmit analog audio over long distances with high noise rejection properties. So it's, it's basically, you see it all over the place because it's such a good connector and so versatile in how it works. Lower half. The lower half of this has two power ports. This is a DC to DC, isolated, regulated, switching power supply. It uses true galvanic isolation, and you have the ability to select 9, 12, 15, or 18 volts. It can provide up to 650 milliamps of current at 9 volts. And we'll show examples. You can see we have an HX stomp that we're powering with the system, no problem. Behind us, we have two carbon tube pedals that draw one amp continuous each, and then the Mach 100 that draws five amps at 24 volts. So we have the ability to power all this stuff. So here it is lit up. Before we get into the audio portion of it, you can see the LED lights. You have the ability to turn them off or select whatever light or brightness intensity you desire. As we were saying before on the, on the isolation, I'm gonna take this wire, I'm gonna plug it into this pod. I'm gonna physically short it you see that pod go into protection. It does not affect any of the other pods in the chain. Once the short's relieved, it, re it restores itself. So we are extremely happy with the power supply with the active noise canceling. We have large ground planes that do everything we can to prevent noise from happening. Upper half of the board. You take your pedal, you simply hook up your, your outputs and your power Plug your power in, make sure your voltage is set right. Take them, plug them into the loop one pedal, flip it from bypass to pedal, and now that is in your loop one chain. If you decide later that you wanted to rewire the board and put it in the loop two chain, you flip, simply flip it to bypass, plug it into loop two, flip it from bypass to pedal, and now you're in loop two. If you have a stereo pedal, simply utilize both chains to do that. It's really that simple. Mounting the pedals. These are actually mounted using screws through the bow or the boss holes, so we're not changing the thread, and it's a secure mount. This one happens to be mounted with double-sided tape. There's examples of the, the uh, uh, pedals being mounted with Velcro, with bicycle chain, with 3D printed feet. It's wire ties, however you want to secure it. At the end of the day, these four screws are what determine how it's mounted. So to reconfigure, it's quite simple on that side of it. A um, Couple of the other things, as I mentioned before, this is just an automotive paint that we were able to put on. And it's, it's just, it's a really flexible system that we tried to cover all the avenues on. I think it can do quite a bit, and especially the idea that you just buy another part with another pedal, and then there's your new board without having to redo everything. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I see, yes, the, the HX stomp, it sticks across, works. Yep. I see bigger pedals, but primarily to make it look nice, I see that you picked a lot of standard size pedals, but there are, you know, the Strymons and whatever. So I wonder how this looks realistically for the average guitar player, once they put together a board, how compatible it is with a regular board. Well, you know, okay. I mean, I'm, I'm the reviewer guy. I, you're, you're the presenter guy, but I need to, 
you 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 did show some bigger pedals, but you didn't quite go out of your way to like take some Joe Schmo's pedal board and transfer it to your system. So I'd be really curious to see how that how that so works. So there are examples of that on our website. Awesome, go there. So go there. There's Link also, below. Yep. There's also testimonials from actual customers that have them. And you talk about the oversize. If you look at this right here, even though this is an expression pedal, it could be a wah pedal like we have in the back or a volume pedal. Yes, it spans across two. If you notice the angle and it's all one level, this angle is six and a half degrees. When you take a step and you put your foot out, your foot naturally goes between five and eight degrees. So we picked that so you're not getting shin splints, it's not fatiguing. You practice on your perform or focus on your performance, not on your pedal board. And that's the other thing with the gaps. Now, if you also look at this, we could have made this the same level for these pedals. We took this, the risers that came from the front and added them to the back, and so now it's a stair step. It's easier to get to that second row. Oh, absolutely, pedal that's awesome. I love that. Without hitting hitting your butt or hitting the dials, so there's just there's a lot of different applications. And and you're right. We had examples last year of James Brown's pedals that are 18 volt that are power hungry that sat on two. It's it's. Nobody makes a perfect pedal board. Nobody makes a perfect no, phone. Correct. There's yes. applications. I looked at, with Rick's guidance, at what the guitarist journey is and the challenges that you have with running out of space and wanting this new pedal and going, which one of the pedals do I have? Do I have? Exactly. And that, that sucks to have to take something off your board. Here, you can just add another part, put it on there, and you actually have it on your board, which brings me to the the price point because it was like, well, look, I look at the electronics in there. It's almost as much or more than is in the pedal. Actually, it's more electronics. Yeah. yeah. This is more electronics under the pedal than you have in the pedal. So we've had feedback going, oh, it's just another thing to fill. Well, I think I just demonstrated on the, the power. Most of the electronics is the power. Other than the audio buffer, it's all analog. So I'm not doing anything to the signal. And actually, everybody that has heard this thinks that it sounds warmer because we're not losing the tonal purity that, that you have. This power supply is more robust than I'll wager you, we had this conversation earlier, than most if not all that are out there. And I showed you that by shorting out one of the pots. It, it's there to protect itself. Is it electronics? Can it fail? There's absolutely that possibility. But we have been playing around with this design for three years before taking it to market. Rick toured with it for a couple of years. We have beat the crap out of this thing and we've had great success with it. So, you know, price point. The empty pods, no electronics, 25 bucks a pod. Wire it with your own patch cable, your own power, you're good to go. Very reasonable. Very reasonable. And you don't outgrow it. It's the one pedal board you will not outgrow. With the electronics, we ship it with the high quality flat gold tip cables. We ship it with the power connector for your pedal. We ship it with Velcro. You don't have to use it, obviously, but a lot of people do. So we try to ship it with everything, including all the hardware that you need to mount the pedal. You buy a pedal, you buy a pod, you go home, you take a Phillips screwdriver, you disconnect the top plate, you click the new one in, you plug the patch cables in, you put the screws back down on it, you hook, attach your pedal, and you play. So what is your time worth? What does it take to build a board to rewire a board, then you're troubleshooting, you're doing all these things, it's it's a challenge. You need to be practicing as an artist. You need to perfect your skill. If I can give you extra space, because you don't have to cram everything into a small real estate, to where you're not accidentally pressing, depressing a pedal that you didn't want to, that you're not doing the onstage ballet with the tip of your toe, and you can address the audience and fill the music and focus on that, not if your foot's gonna hit the right spot, you're going to be a better player. Given that the cables and everything are included, so you told me the price earlier, how much is a pot with the electronics? Right now we have them at retail at 85, or sorry, at 80 bucks a pot. Okay, so that makes a board like this, 360 bucks. Yeah. But if I buy, a, let's say pedal train board, and I buy the power supply, and I buy the cables because the cables can wreck you. They can wreck you. Yeah. Then I would say with everything that a board of this size, if I have a good power supply, not if I have a shitty one, which most of you are using, 360 is easily what I would pay 
for a normal board. It's very close to that. Yes, it's we've we've looked at we, a lot of respect for the guys at Temple Audio. They do make an amazing product. They are, and I'll tell everybody this right now. They are a beautiful board at a great value. They really are. We are trying to be, in, in America, we have Yeti coolers. We're trying to be the Apple or the Yeti or the Tesla. I, I can't perform at that rate for a price point. There's a lot of engineering and a lot of costs, as you know, that have been put into this thing. But I can guarantee the quality. I can guarantee the performance. And I can guarantee that you can buy that pedal that you want to buy, but you haven't because you're fearful of having to rewire your board or strip everything off and buy a new board. Let us take that, that stress away from you. Put this thing together. This board took us about 30 minutes to build. It's rugged. We've been beating on it all show. And, and play. Don't build, play. If you look at how much a board will usually run you, given that they ship everything with the board, that's a good argument. Now, of course, that is direct. So they're going to have to figure out how the pricing will be if they if they give me great yeah. great advice on how we can if do that. if it gets shipped to Europe and all this, but this can be figured out. We want to know what do you think so they can take this further, and make it better. Yeah, absolutely, make it better. We we would value your opinion. You're not here to play with it and to interact with it, and I understand that. And you're looking on the video, and they look big on video. Trust me, I'm not this fat in person. All right, maybe a little bit, but it, it's. When you put it up next to other boards, it is really similar in size. Yep. So in, in the construction, if you go to our, our website, you'll see a picture. We took Rick, my partner, and drove his Tahoe up on three rows of these, like you were going to change your oil, and it didn't creak, pop, crack, nothing happened to it. So it's plastic, but it's goodly. It's very goodly plastic. Goodly plastic. Is yep. that a word, goodly? It's, it is. Is it? Okay. Well. You know, I just learned something that, yeah, it's high impact. For those of us that are old enough to remember cell phones when they first came out, it's the same plastic that Motorola used in their brick phone that they used to drop for buildings. It's the exact same formulation. If I wanted to go to a stronger plastic, it would be fiberglass reinforced, which is extremely expensive. So check out Pedal Pods. I put the link below and uh, let us know what you think so they can take this to market or know what else they need to do so you'd be interested in it. Yes, please. Th thanks for watching. Thanks, Jerry, for presenting thanks this for to time. us. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you for your time, everyone. And um, you guys uh, now get some animals at the end. But I could have become someday Father, have I lost my way?